Hello and welcome to a very special bulletin on Hornbill TV. Manipur has been on the boil for exactly 89 days as of today. Violence ensued from the 3rd of May after a tribal solidarity march was organized by the All Tribal Students Union of Manipur over the High Court's order asking the government about the inclusion of Mehtes in the ST category. Ever since, till the 4th of July, Manipur has informed to the Supreme Court that 142 deaths had taken place. But sadly, the nation woke up to the Manipur issue only on the 19th of July, when a video of an inhuman incident of two women being paraded naked went viral. Ever since, we have seen a host of leaders visit the state to assess the situation. Sadly, not the Prime Minister. But today, we have a very special guest at Hornbill TV. She is a firebrand activist of women's rights, and she is also the Delhi Commission for Women Chief. The people of the Northeast will be familiar with her because of her endeavour to visit the strife-torn state of Manipur by her own to at least provide a sense of support and relief to the women of the state and especially the victims of the horrific video that went viral on July 19th. She went the extra mile of even meeting a BJP MLA of Manipur, Vungzagin Valte, who was grievously harmed by a mob in Imphal on the May of 4th. She is none other than Swati Maliwal, the chief of Delhi Women Commission. First of all, ma'am, I would really like to appreciate you for giving us time at Hornbill TV. Well, ma'am, I do not want to start my interview by asking you how do you eat mangoes or whether you get tired working or not. So I want to directly get into the conversation. So my first question would be, ma'am, there are 29 state women commissions. There are seven union territory women commissions. What did, what made the Delhi chief of the women commission go by herself to Imphal and what really boiled you that you had to visit the ground map? When I saw that viral video of those two girls being paraded naked and molested and then I was told that after that one of them was gang raped very brutally, it really shook me. I think it shook the conscience of this country. I was not able to sleep for a couple of days. I was waiting that somebody from the center, somebody from the National Commission for Wisdom, somebody will have the guts to go there and just talk to those survivors and just because I could see that nobody from the Manipur government was coming. I wrote to the Manipur government requesting their support because I really wanted to just visit these girls and understand whether they've got any kind of relief from the center or the state. But Manipur government did not support me. In fact, they wrote back saying that because there's a law and order problem, I should postpone my visit. But I was coming there because of the law and order problem, because the fact is that Manipur is burning. And the fact is that that no bothered. That is why I decided that me and my member Vandana Singh, we both decided we will come regardless of everything. We came, the government did not offer us any support, we were not given any security. We to the district of Puja Transpur and Konsokti alone without any kind of a cover. There was firing happening that day. There was, uh, you know, it was a very sensitive and dangerous situation, yet we reached there. I met uh, the two survivors, uh, husband as well as the mother, and they were inconsolable. It's so shocking what has happened with them. And even more shocking is that I could come all the way from Delhi and reach them without any support, without knowing anybody in Manipur, without even uh, having been to Manipur ever before. I was able to reach them, but the chief minister of Manipur is still sitting inside his home and has refused to meet these people, refused to meet any other survivors, refused to visit any relief camp. What kind of a shocking circumstances is this? The entire Manipur is burning. Thousands of people have been displaced, their houses have been burned, they are forced to live in relief camps with minimal and almost none facilities. In such a scenario, the Chief Minister of Manipur is just holed up inside his house and refuses to even step out. I think it is really shameful. I also met uh, the brother of the of two girls, 21 and 24 year old who were actually gang raped and murdered in Impal on 4th of May. Even to him, 
he i mean no arrests have also been made in his case and nothing no relief has been provided to him no compensation no legal aid no counseling whatsoever and even the dead bodies this is his allegation that those dead bodies also remain in uh, in fall and uh, even though not not been handed over to the brother of those two girls and countless such stories countless horrific horrible painful stories it was one of the most overwhelming works that i have ever done i mean each and every place we went we were crying they were crying and so unfortunate that the prime minister of the country has not bothered to step into manipur to see the situation to devise a comprehensive strategy to be able to deal with it and the chief minister of manipur is silent he is completely missing from the scene he really needs to resign i mean i don't know what is the point of doing they need to seek his resignation and they need to come up with an action because manipur is beautiful uh, it's such a beautiful land and the people are even more beautiful they're so simple and kind hearted they were so welcoming even in the most difficult of circumstances as in today they were so welcoming towards me people everywhere and why is it that the center despite manipur being such an integral part of my country refuses to take notice in the matter of great shame all right ma'am i i want to now concentrate on your visit to churachandpur ma'am uh, as soon as you were back to the imphal airport the first thing that you mentioned was that as a woman yourself you could make your way you could reach churachandpur without any uh, assistance being provided by the state government so ma'am on this on your particular journey to churachandpur ma'am who helped you out i'm sure it would be the warring communities themselves but when they helped you ma'am what did you at least get a sense that you know apart from the violence that is already happening in manipur there some people still want peace so ma'am did you get the feeling on your journey ma'am you see people are very very angry in manipur right now there's a hatred which has uh, seeped into both the communities that is what i understood i also understand that they are united in their hatred for the manipur government they feel that the chief minister has completely failed them because he failed to contain the violence and in fact has ended up in a way not to take any action even the people in the relief camp in moira in infal were very angry with him So all throughout my journey to the Chura Chanto district, as well as to Kompoxi, which I went the next day, and these questions were there in my mind: How is it that a beautiful land gets converted into a war zone just because uh, you know these people are simple, they are very nice people, but there is an enmity, and that enmity is also stepping from I I believe the stepping from uh, inaction. So I think it is very unfortunate what has happened, and uh, I'm also preparing a report right now for the uh, government, uh, for the central government. I'll be submitting my report. I'll be submitting my interim uh, recommendations. But my question again and again to myself as well as to other people around was that what is the hope now? How do we move forward? When I met people in Chura Chandpur, when I met people in Moirang, when I met people in Imphal, one thing is so clear. they all want justice they all want peace but it's so unfortunate that neutral organizations like probably the center you know who should step in and who should try and make sure that uh, action is taken justice is given you see in all these cases that i met whether it was sura chandpur whether it was moirang whether it was impal all these horrific stories that i heard there is one commonality and that is that apart from the viral video case the manipur police have failed to make a single arrest there are people who are missing there are people like the chitti or old woman who was uh, burnt alive she was the wife of a freedom fighter there are so many such cases a 70 year old woman i met in chura chandpur my heart goes out to her only son she was sleeping with him the moment she woke up because she heard gun shots the moment she woke up she saw this bullet just pass through the sun and he died on the spot and she's all alone now so who is accountable for these deaths who is accountable for the sexual assault that has happened in manipur who is accountable for so many so such a huge loss of destruction you see everything is 
board how does our board so much destruction has happened so who is accountable and how will we make sure that we will go ahead and life will be restored to its normalcy it's very very sad and i know i personally know at least 30 to 40 women who have fled from uh, manipur and reached delhi we are trying to get in touch with them we spoke to them we are trying to help them but you see the magnanimity of the problem and the complete insensitivity and apathy that has been displayed by the manipur government as well as the central government is a matter that really makes my head hang in shame oh man now coming back to also uh, you had alleged that until the time that you met the two victims of that horrific video ma'am they were not being provided any uh, ex gratia no compensation no legal aid no counseling but ma'am uh, yesterday the governor of manipur she gave an ex gratia compensation of 15 lakhs to the two victims and uh, also uh, the victims of the violence are now being given 15000 by the governor so ma'am in your uh, in your knowledge of politics and in your norm, uh, in your knowledge of how administration works when does when did the governor start giving out ex gratia ma'am because i will give you one example there was an accident in maharashtra highway yesterday after which prime minister narendra modi pr- personally tweeted in his twitter account and he awarded a ex gratia of 2 lakhs but now in manipur it's the governor who is now starting to give what do you have to say about that ma'am How much amount was given? I'm sorry, I'm not uh, aware ma'am, uh, of it. Ah, ma'am, fifteen lakh was given, ma'am. Fifteen lakhs, one to five. To both the survivors or uh, to one survivor? Uh, to both of them, ma'am. Two victims. So I really want to congratulate the Manipur governor. Governor, in a way, she is acting as the de facto chief minister. Chief minister is absolutely. You see what kind of a that the governor, whose role is actually not there to really, uh, you know, act. in a governing manner is now being forced to take control of the state and actually help survivors so she has waited for all these days that maybe the chief minister will rise up will wake up and will help the survivors but because he refused to do it the governor on her own accord has done it and i remember i went to moiram relief camp and i was speaking to the survivors there of oilin and they informed me that the governor has visited them but the chief minister never bothered to visit So I think she is a lady, and I think she is trying to do something for sure. And I really uh, thank her for uh, giving that amount. I still feel that it is less. I still feel that more needs to be done. But I really, from the bottom of my heart, thank this lady who is speaking up. You see, she has given interviews where she has blasted the government and informed that for the first time in her life, with all her years of politics. This is the first time in her life that she is seeing any state burn in this way, not to Manipur. Yes. So she is trying, she is doing it, and you know, it's like uh, if nobody is doing anything, then I guess people have to step in. I think it's a similar case with the Delhi Commission for Women. We don't have a mandate in Manipur. In fact, I was told that this is completely disastrous because. A, we don't have a mandate. B, the government told us not to come. If tomorrow anything would have happened to me and my team, uh, we would have been held responsible. We would have been blamed for it, you know, for inviting the trouble. But still, we went because we feel that all women in this country belong to us, and we belong to every woman in this country. We don't divide women in Delhi, Rajasthan, Punjab, Haryana, uh, uh, Manipur, uh, Tripura. No, we think that women in this country. are important and each and every woman has right and human rights were violated in the worst form ever in this horrific case which became viral and there are various other cases that need urgent attention of the government so i really thank the governor of manipur for taking this good step and i think i would appeal to her that she needs to get a list of all the other survivors created and compensation has to immediately reach them All right, ma'am. Now I want to uh, talk about the situation in the relief camps. According to your statement, after you visited the relief camps in Chura Chandpur, Kangpokpi, uh, Moirang, and also Imphal, ma'am, you had commented saying the condition of the relief camps are worst. But yesterday there was, apart from all the bad news that is coming out from the state, there is some good news in which a relief camp in Imphal. Now the district administration has started providing vocational training to the. Uh, victims of violence in the relief camps now ma'am my question is this 
when you had gone to visit the relief camps in Churachanpur, Moirang, Kangpokpi and Imphal, was the same treatment being given to all relief camps? And also, ma'am, when you said the condition of the relief camps are worse, what did you mean by that, ma'am? You see, all these relief camps, A, they are overcrowded. There are hundreds of people living there, children, elderly, even differently abled persons, but uh, there is not uh, enough care for them. That is one. The other thing is that food is an issue. A, most of these camps are being able to provide hardly two meals in a day. And even the food is not nutritious. And there are children there. We need to look after them. There is a fear of vector-borne diseases, especially diseases through mosquitoes being spread in these areas. There is a problem with water. There is a problem with toilets. There is a problem and a very serious problem with medicines because there are uh, uh, the remote uh, remoter areas like Tura Chanpur and all are not getting enough medicines. So I feel that uh, while uh, in one particular uh, uh, relief camp in the capital, the government is doing something. All right, it is good that they're doing something. But I really think that it has to reach everywhere because the government has to be for everyone. The government has to be an organization which has to reach the remotest of the remote uh, people. Right now, forget about the relief camps. I mean, relief camps are still getting something. What about those people who are stuck in their hill regions, in their uh, houses in the hills, who have not moved to relief camps? Even uh, health is not uh, reaching them. So I think medicine especially is a very, very gray area which needs to be, I mean, immediate efforts need to be made in order to reach out to all the relief camps and students, the schools. So I also read in the newspapers that, you know, certain schools have opened in Impal. But it is only about Impal. What about the rest of the district? Schools are not opening there. What about all those children who lose a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe probably even in year? How about uh, reach, making sure that counselling is reaching these relief camps? Each and every person I met has encountered some violence or the other. You know, their houses have been burned. That is why they are here. The kind of violence these children must have faced. Has the government been able to make a list of all those children who have become orphans? What steps are being taken in order to make sure that they are given the requisite care and protection? I think instead of doing photo ops, the government needs to right now make sure that each and every relief camp is being supported by it. You see, in most of these relief camps, they're being run by volunteers. They're being organized by volunteers. The government is hardly giving some food material. That is it. And that too through the MMA, through the DC. So no, no one even knows for sure that what material is actually being given by them to the remotest corners of Manipur. So the government has to be proactive. The chief minister has to be seen as working. The chief minister has to visit these areas, has to make all attempts to bring peace, not to just sit in his empire air-conditioned home and act as if everything is beautiful because things are really, really dark. All right, now, ma'am, a question that is a little apart. I mean, uh, the nation woke up on the 19th of July to a very, very horrifying video in which, after which only Manipur came into the scene. The nation woke up, they realized that Manipur is burning only on the July of 19th. Well, the violence started on May 3rd and on the July of 19th, that was 79 days after turbulence or basically violence started on the state. Ma'am, on the 4th of July, the Manipur government had informed the Supreme Court that 142 deaths had already taken place till the 4th of July, after which the numbers could have increased. We are right now on the 31st of July. One thing I want to ask is, why are the people only talking and about the, that particular viral video and also why are the people only, why did the nation only wake up after the video went viral, why didn't the nation wake up for the 142 deaths that took place already before July 4th? And who's now, going to, be, who's now going to be responsible for the 142 deaths that came, uh, that the Manipur government themselves reported? I think the centre and Manipur government are absolutely to blame. The central government was seeing Manipur burn for all these days and did not take any action. Even the viral video case, you see the National Commission for Women received a complaint on the same on June 12th. 
and refused to act on it for more than 38 days when the video gets viral then the national commission for women chairperson tweets that i am taking four moto cognizance on the issue when how can it be four moto because they already had a complaint with them that complaint also mentions this 21 and 24 year girls who were gang raped and murdered whom we finally met the brother and uh, the commission uh, the complaint mentions a 15 year old girl gang raped a 19 year old girl gang raped or uh, the uh, butchering of a 45 year old woman and absolute no action by the uh, national commission for women and that has been the case of the center you see the entire country has woken up after the viral video but the center refuses to wake up even now even now the prime minister is not making a statement and forget about statements he said enough of statements we want action why is the prime minister of the country not going to manipur i met so many survivors and that is a question that they were asking me because i am from delhi and really i don't have any answers the prime minister of the country the home minister of the country the union wcb minister they right now have to be in manipur they have to speak to leaders of both the communities they have to make sure that in a neutral manner the situation is dealt with and the chief minister needs to be really sad because i don't think he has done any work i think it it's really something very sad like i used to read the newspaper every day and my heart used to burn that you know so many uh, people have been uh, uh, killed so much burning has happened in manipur it's burning and nobody is talking about it but because my mandate is very different i was just thinking about it i was praying but then suddenly something happened which shook me also completely out of my uh, this uh, persona that i am the chairperson of the delhi commission for women i'm supposed to do this and i asked myself that question that if i don't go to manipur today when nobody else is going if i don't act right now will i justify my being a woman will i justify my being a delhi commission for women chairperson no i cannot pretend that you know my files i'm signing that okay this is happening that is happening i'm doing this work and no even when i come back from manipur i'm not able to get over it i mean those thoughts those prayers of course they are all with manipur but each and every time i sit alone when i'm not doing any work i'm constantly thinking about all those people who have suffered so much from manipur and it's so important that the prime minister of the country understand and and invite the suffering till the time he will not go these are just numbers these are just videos but if you go there and you meet them and if you meet the survivors and when you hear their stories and when you hear their constant sob i don't think that as a human being anybody could be so uh, pathetic that they would not respond so it's extremely crucial i feel that this a uh, prime minister needs to go there needs to get into action otherwise really i mean i think the center completely will fail money All right, ma'am. Also, uh, you had written a letter to the Bharatiya Janata Pres uh, Bharatiya Janata Party President J P Nadda asking for assistance in taking care of a BJP MLA from Ma- Manipur, Vungzagin Valte, who was grievously harmed. And uh, we have seen the reports as to what uh, the demand was through your letter. But then, on the very corresponding day, the Minister of Public Information uh, of Manipur had said that the Manipur government. has been assisting vungzagin valte from the day he was airlifted to a hospital now ma'am who do we believe do we believe the state government or now do we believe in your statement ma'am? and now that you've actually met uh, vungzagin valte personally what is his side of the story ma'am see what i have spoken is only his side of the story i had never met him before i don't know him and i have met him now and his family i met his wife as well and how in such a scenario can anybody have any trust on manipur government and on his on their department because at the end of the day they are not doing anything one thing see that okay they allowed the air lifting of uh, mr valte but is that enough over a crore rupees will be spent in his treatment already 40 to 50 lakh rupees have been spent in the treatment Has the chief minister met Mr. Walpe even when he was an infant hospitalized? Did he have the shame to come and meet him? He was his advisor on tribal affairs. Has he called up Mrs. Walpe? 
has he tried to have any conversation with mr walte and just tell him you know mr walte's words that he has betrayed manipur these are his words not my words and right now he's paralyzed he's unable to move he's bedridden and i met this man who had who was so strong because despite all of that not even once did mr walte mention how much pain is he in no all he kept saying was that my people are unsafe help me to reach them i want to go back it is my dream that i want to go back to my people because they really love me so i see on one end a leader who is completely bedridden whose family is destroyed who who probably may not be able to ever get up again and be the same but I, even in those moments is thinking about manipur and is trying to help manipur and i see a chief minister who a does not have the courage to take things head on who does not have the Uh, humility and the empathy to go and meet the survivors of violence, and who has the shame of saying that I got Mr. Walde airlifted. Oh, great! We should, you know, all clap for Mr. Uh, Biren Singh. I think he does not deserve to be the chief minister. Forget about chief minister; he does not even deserve to be called a human being. All right, uh, ma'am. As upon your touchdown on Imphal Airport, when you were speaking to media persons, the first thing you said that you would do upon reaching Imphal would be to go and meet the chief minister. So, ma'am, uh, were you were you able to meet the chief minister? And if you were able, what was the conversation? And, and if you can please share, what was the conversation about if you had met chief minister, ma'am? I think Mr. Biren Singh does not have the courage to just face me. He does not have the courage to look me in his in the eyes because that is exactly what he did. He just refused to meet me. So And which how did he do? Which a lone girl from Delhi comes all the way without any support, without knowing anybody, locals, government, no one I knew in Manipur before, except for a few friends in Delhi whom I call uh, people in Delhi whom I call as my friends. Except for them, I had no idea. About Manipur, I end up going and meeting Chura Chansel victims. I end up going meeting uh, Kompok T victims, and this man is in a very shameless manner, completely holed up in his house. Have you seen Mr. Biren Singh come out? I have not because I went to so many places. Nobody has seen him. He is the it's a curious case of a missing chief minister. He is just sitting in his house and he is pretending as if everything is okay and he is working from home. Excuse me. The chief minister's work is on the ground. It is not supposed to be restricted to the home. So how will he meet me? I don't think he has the courage or the guts to meet me because I'm really going to give him a piece of my mind if I get to meet him. All right, ma'am. So which means we can confirm that uh, your initial idea or actually your plan on visiting the chief minister was not successful. So you did not meet Chief Minister N. Biren Singh. I I was not able to meet him. I really wanted to meet him. Even if now he calls me for a meeting, I'm going to fly down to Imphal and I want to meet him because I really want to tell him what wrong he is doing and how he has changed the state of Manipur. I uh, also spoke to. I also requested the governor of Manipur and I was given an opportunity. She met me for almost one and a half hours and I could feel that this woman she has her heart in the right place and she is passionate and she was try- she is trying to help. And I'm like I said, I'm very, uh, I'm happy to know that finally, at least she only had to like you know somehow take action, and she only had to give the compensation, a compensation that should have been released on the first day by Mr. Biren Singh's government, had to ultimately be released by the orders of the governor. So um, Mr. Biren Singh, I don't think has any face to meet me, and uh, if he decides to do so, I'm definitely coming down, and I'm definitely giving him a piece of my mind. All right, ma'am. Another update that is coming from the government of Manipur is that the situation ever since July 18th is being normal, and Manipur is slowly returning back to normalcy. Now, ma'am, you had gone there personally. You had visited the ground. You met victims. You met. You heard a lot of atrocious stories. Do you feel that the statement that Manipur is now going back to normal is actually true, ma'am? It is like you're just sitting in a room and you're closing your eyes and you don't want to address that there is a elephant in the room and that is really what Mr. Biren Singh is right now doing. The situation in Manipur is extremely volatile. It is unstable. It is sensitive. There are thousands, and if I quote the governor of Manipur, sixty thousand, more than sixty thousand people have been displaced. 
there is a firing that is going on guns are being fired out of 4600 arms that were looted uh, less than 1600 have been have been recovered so there are arms that are sophisticated weapons right now in the hands of civilian group and the gov- and the government of manipur has the audacity to say that everything is normal compensation has not reached legal aid has not reached counseling has not reached relief camps are just overflowing with people there is no relief and the government has of the day has the shame of calling it a normal situation can anybody from imphal right now uh, uh from a particular community can they go to uh, districts uh, uh, which are uh, uh, dominated by the other community or a person from that other community come back to imphal there is a de facto geographical and demographical uh, separation that has happened and on top of it uh, the government of uh, manipur is saying that things are getting back to normal i'm sorry things are not getting back to normal the day i went to chura chanpur the day i went to konpokki i myself saw that there was firing that was happening with great difficulty we were somehow able to go there in one piece and return in one piece alive in such circumstances where the chief minister of the day does not uh, uh, venture out of his house obviously for him things are getting normal because he has an air condition in his house he has all the facilities in his house and that problem which people face which people like mr walte face i really don't think mr chief minister has even under, has an understanding of what is going on in manipur and it's very shameful it's very shameful All right ma'am now this question is for the chair i mean the chairperson of the delhi women commission and it comes from uh, a lot of uh, depth from many parents in the northeast Ev- here in the northeast everybody realizes that delhi is a wonderful uh, city for their children to go there for education but ma'am you have been very vocal about the women's rights especially in delhi uh, recently we had just spoken about the malvia nagar incident in which a college going student was literally beaten by an iron rod then you had also appealed to the central government to hold a meeting so that you can discuss the law and order situation especially relating to women rights and safety of women in delhi now a big question arises here amongst the parents of the northeastern uh, people and that is one thing is they want to send their daughters to delhi for a good education so that they can get into reputed colleges and institutions but they are also apprehensive over the safety and concern and now as the chairperson of the delhi commission for women what would your appeal be to these parents who are apprehensive about sending their daughters to a beautiful city like delhi to follow their education so what kind of an appeal would you like to make ma'am so i completely understand and appreciate the concerns of the parents because that is something that is very genuine in delhi we are having six rapes every day and the kind of murders that we have witnessed in the past 1 to 2 years is they are horrific i mean uh, the brutality of the crime is really increasing Uh, the Delhi Commission for Women, on its own accord, is trying its level best. We are issuing notices. We are getting FIRs registered. We are trying to support the survivors. In six years, we have handled over a hundred thousand complaints, and every day on our help line, which is one eight one, we are receiving around two thousand to four thousand calls. And we have a team of network of around twenty three cars, sixty six round the clock counselors. Whenever a call is received, we actually send a team. We've done thousands of rescues through this process. So while the Delhi Commission for Women is working, and I'm very proud of that work, even I feel very unhappy and dissatisfied that despite all of this work, working on Saturday, Sunday, day, night, at the end of the day, Delhi is not safe. That said, like I, I'm a Delhiite. I, um, it's a beautiful place. I love the city of Delhi, and uh, it has a lot of opportunity. All I can say is that uh, the Delhi Commission for Women will always support such girls. And in many cases, when there is discrimination against girls from the north east, the Delhi Commission for Women has intervened. So, in case anybody needs any help, we are there. My office is in ITO. My uh, number, uh, the helpline number is one eight one. If you ring from uh, Delhi, you it will land on our uh, helpline number, and we are there to help. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to speak to you.
and also thank you so much for your endeavor and at least trying to provide a sense of relief some sense of peace some sense of justice to the people of northeast and especially to manipur through your visit there and thank you for always being vocal about the importance of women rights and especially when it comes to safety of women and thank you for giving us your valuable time we appreciate it thank you ma'am thank you thank you so that was the delhi commission of women chief swati maliwal and you just heard about her personal visit to imphal manipur that is her interactions with the victims of violence her interactions with inmates in relief camps and also her suggestion as to what the government is doing in manipur she further appealed to the parents of northeastern states that if you are sending your daughters to the state of uh, to delhi the national commission of women or rather the delhi commission of women will always be there to support them well for more interviews like this keep watching hornbill tv